welcome to this course on global marketing management and we have talked about the second section that is the global marketing environment now we will start uh, start talking about the development of competitive strategy now you see that we are moving from the uh, from the external environment to the internal environment from the broad environment to the narrow environment how these the uh, the global marketing environment how does it affects uh, the internal environment how does it affect the consumers so this is what we will uh, first try to understand and uh, we will start talking about global marketing research which is spread over two modules that is module number 12 and 13 now we will talk about module 12 and you see from this uh, from this chart from global marketing research will come how to go about segmentation targeting and positioning and then about the four p's so from uh, uh, we will understand from global marketing research uh, how to go about fo uh, forming the uh, the marketing strategy so the, the, that is why this this module is called as development of the of the competitive strategy and there uh, based on these two things uh, will come the global uh, market mar market entry mode in this module we will first talk about uh, the uh, the marketing research process the global marketing research process is slightly different from the domestic marketing research process and i'll tell you where the differences comes in then we will talk about the secondary global marketing research the primary global marketing research and how to go about using internet for global marketing research now let us first try to understand why this uh, marketing research is required given the complexity of the global marketplace there are different types of external environments across uh, different countries the solid marketing research is critical for a host of global marketing decisions skipping or not doing the research phase in the international marketing decision process can prove to be a very costly mistake for the for the company and most of the cultural blunders in global marketing they have come up from inadequate marketing research therefore even marketing behemoths such as walmart and png sometimes fail to live up to the test test and test maxim when now you look at this example when walmart first entered the argent argentine uh, argentine market its jewelry counters display emerald sapphires and diamonds while argentinian women prefers wearing gold and silver the hardware department had tools and appliances for 110 volt electric power while the standard throughout argentina is 220 volt now you see they, these can be uh, not doing sufficient amount of global marketing research can can prove to be uh, a blunder what is marketing research so marketing research is a systematic design collection analysis and reporting first is it it has to be systematic second it is the design collection analysis and reporting of data and findings which are relevant to specific marketing situation facing the company so we will do marketing research when there is a specific marketing situation that the company faces so marketing research assists the global marketing managers in two ways first is to make better decisions that recognize cross country similarities and differences and another important thing that global marketing research does is to gain support from the local subsidiaries for proposed marketing decisions what happens uh, many a times it so happens that the local subsidiary they think that the headquarters they are imposing their decisions on them so in order to come do away with this kind of mindset this marketing research can be a, uh, can be a tool uh, that can be used so that the support from local subsidiaries can be gained for the marketing decisions now this is the role of marketing research these are the various customer groups so one is consumer employees shareholders and suppliers all of them put together are called as customer groups there on the right here is the uncontrollable environmental factors that is the external environment that uh, as we have see, seen in the second section that is the uh, the global marketing environment that consist of political legal economic social and cultural technology and laws and regulations 
Then on the extreme, li ex extreme left, you have the internal environment, that is the controllable environmental factors, product, price, place pro uh, and uh, promotion. And then we are doing marketing research to gather information from all these places and this uh, marketing research will assess the information uh, needs, they, it will provide information and it will help in marketing decision making. And the marketing managers can use this information for market segmentation, test uh, target market selection, the various marketing programs, performance and control. And then again, this information again goes back to, uh, to marketing research so that the marketing decisions can be after, after performance and control and feedback, all this information goes back to uh, again goes back to marketing research so that uh, marketing decisions can be changed accordingly. These are the six steps to conduct a global marketing research. These, these steps are the same that uh, are, are, no, are normally done in domestic market research also. So, for the first step is to define the research problem, the second is to develop a research design, the third step is to determine information needs, the fourth is to collect the data that is the primary or the secondary data, then we will analyze the data and interpret the result and report and present the findings of the study to the decision maker. So, keep in mind that marketing research will not make decisions. So, marketing research will not make a decision. It provides information to managers for decision making. So, the first step of this global marketing research process is to define the problem one, then the decision alternatives and the research objectives. What is to be researched that is the content and scope of the problem and why it is to be researched the decision that are to be made. The second step is to develop a research plan, but it include another six type of things, first is the data source, research design, research approach, sampling plan, research instrument and contact method. Now, let us look at each one of them. What are the various types of data sources? One type of data source is the secondary source or the secondary data, data that was collected for another purpose and already exist somewhere. Another type of data is primary data that is freshly gathered data for a specific purpose, a specific purpose at hand. The second component of research plan is the research design. What is a research design? Research design is a framework or a blueprint for conducting the marketing research project. It details the procedure necessary for obtaining the information needed to structure or solve marketing research problems. This is the classification of various marketing research design. So, marketing research design can be exploratory or conclusive. So, these are the two types of marketing research designs. Now, conclusive research design can again be of two types that is descriptive and causal. So, research designs are of two types, exploratory and conclusive. Conclusive research designs are of two types, descriptive research and causal research. Descriptive research can be cross-sectional design or longitudinal design. And cross-sectional design can be again of two types, single cross-sectional design and multiple cross-sectional design. The third thing are the research approaches. Again, these are of uh, six different kinds. So, it, uh, research, you can conduct a research by way of observation, ethnography, focus group, survey, you can use behavioral data or you can use experimentation. The various types of research 
instruments available are first as uh, everybody knows uh, are the questionnaires. The second is the qualitative measures that includes word association, projective techniques, visualization, brand personification and lettering. The, the third types of, type of research instrument are the technological devices that can be used to collect data for example, galvanometers and techoscope, eye, eye cameras, audiometers and GPS. The fifth component is the sampling plan and it again con, uh, consists of three different types of uh, questions. First is what is the sampling unit that is who is to be surveyed. For example, a person goes to a house to collect data then who will answer the questions. The second is sampling size, how many people should be surveyed? It should be 10 or 20 or 100 or 1000. What is the sampling procedure? How should the respondent be chosen? So, should we just start uh, asking question to each and everyone who comes across us or uh, we or there are other methods also. So, there the various types of samples are probability samples. Probability sam samples include simple random sample, stratified random sample and cluster samples, while non probability samples are convenience, judgment and quota. The various types of contact methods are mail questionnaire, telephonic interviews, personal interviews and online interviews. So, these all these things they uh, these these can be uh, the details can be available for uh, or you, you can go through any uh, any course on marketing research for understanding the details of the of these courses that of, of these things and we will also talk about these things uh, uh, in some more detail later on. But let us look at the major challenges faced by the global marketing searches. So, this is this is the problem specific to these are the problems which are specific to global marketing researchers and not to domestic market researchers. The first problem that a global marketing researcher, researcher faces is complexity of research design because of environmental difference and the research design that is the second step because you see that research design includes so many so many things the research approaches and instruments and sampling plan and, and types of sample etcetera. So, this uh, com the research design becomes complex across uh, the various countries across the world. Then there can be lack and inaccuracy of secondary data. So, what is for example, what is poverty line? So, that that kind of uh, thing can be different in different countries. What is the voting age in different countries? So, that uh, the lack of lack, so or either the information is not available or the information available is inaccurate. Time and cost to collect primary data that will be different in different countries depending upon the type of method of uh, uh, of contact that, that you may choose. So, if you are if you are getting information from internet gathering question uh, getting up uh, getting people to fill questionnaires through internet then the cost and time may be low. Other is when you go from door to door and collect data th data then the time and cost can be very very high. And then the fourth problem is coordination of multi country research efforts. So, when you are doing a research marketing research in different countries so how to go about coordinating this. And then the uh, the fifth uh, problem that uh, the global marketing researcher, researcher face is difficulty in establishing comparability across multi country studies. So, in one country the findings how to how to relate how to understand those findings with respect to the findings of the, of the other country. I will give uh, briefly give you an example about this. So, let us let us talk of the use of the bicycle. In, in one country the, the, the number of bicycles uh, sold may be different from the number of number of bicycles sold in another country because in one country it is they are used to use for the purpose of transportation. And in other country they are used for leisure or just for the sake of cycling. So, therefore, how to establish the, uh, uh, the compara comparability of the data across uh, countries. Uh, then we talk about the first step of this research process that is the problem research problem formulation. Any research starts off with the precise definition of the research problem, the precise definition of the research problem. 
and in international context the marketing research problem formulation is hindered by the self reference reference criteria that we have talked about earlier or ethnocentrism a major difficulty in formulating the research problem is unfamiliarity with the foreign environment so how do we go about defining a research problem when we are not aware of the environment in uh, in the foreign country therefore omnibus surveys are regularly conducted by research agencies let us look at this example of multi country marketing research project by eli lilly the research problem was to estimate the dollar potential for a prescription weight loss product in the uk spain italy and germany this research problem was converted into research hypothesis that is the patients would be willing to pay a premium price for the product even without reimbursement by the government they used primary and secondary data to conduct this research the secondary data research that included market share of similar product that is uh, isomerit the second type of data that they used was incidence of overweight and obesity obesity in europe then they conducted after 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 having collected secondary data so that was the first step then they started collecting primary data the sample size that they they have choose they choose uh, they have chosen was 350 physicians from these four countries uk italy spain and germany the sampling procedure was random selection from a high prescriber prescribers doctors list based on company data the data collected was by three different methods the first is a diary was kept by physicians for 2 weeks so these 350 physicians they kept a diary for 2 weeks questionnaires completed by patients who were just to be prospect for the product by physicians so people who were people who were uh, who were obese and overweight they they uh, were contacted and they were asked to fill a questionnaire the pricing study study done based on 30 additional four interviews with physicians in the uk italy and spain to measure the price sensitivity what is secondary global marketing research once the research issue has been stated management needs to determine the information needs researchers will first explore secondary data sources since that information that kind of information is usually available which is much more cheaper and less time consuming to gather as compared to the primary data so any kind of marketing research the first thing that uh, you should do is to look at the secondary data sources before you go in for the primary data sources marketing researchers market researchers in developed countries have access to a wealth of data that uh, that uh, was gathered by government and private agencies earlier but unfortunately the equivalents of such databases are missing outside the developed world when the information is available it may be hard to track down the starting point for data collection is the internet or a computerized service that provides real time online access to information resources based on user provided keywords so we will we will look at this in a moment many companies have their own libraries that provide valuable data sources and large companies typically compile enormous data banks on their operations so they keep on collecting data which is then stored in data banks and, uh, and then it acts as a source of secondary data governments publish lots of uh, data and this can uh, sometime offer information on overseas markets also beside government offices there are various international agencies such as the world bank oecd imf and united nations they gather a huge amount of data now lots of reports are published by these organizations which are especially useful for demographics economic information and trends in socio economic indicators 
so all this information can be used which is freely available before we start looking for primary information several companies they specialize in producing business related information which is more directly relevant for companies however su such information is usually far more expensive than government based data because the, uh, this information lots of this information is freely available on the websites uh, of these organizations but then there uh, 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 this information may not be so useful for a company therefore there are several several companies who collect data for com for uh, for other companies on on the basis of payment now these are the various sources of secondary data that can be uh, easily and uh, freely used that is yearbook of international trade statistics that is published by united nations us imports that is published by us bureau of the census us exports and then exporters encyclopedia there are country information handbooks with that include uh, includes socio economic and political conditions yearbook of industrial statistics is published by uh, united nations then there are stat statistical yearbook th that are that is published by united nations and updated by monthly bulletin of statistics then there is oecd that is econo uh, oecd's economic survey world competitiveness yearbook then there are country reports that are published by eieu demographic year uh, yearbook that is published by united nations statistical yearbook is pub again published by united nations uh, so the, uh, all this information is freely available and th uh, these can be the uh, the first step and th uh, this information can be used as the first step for conducting marketing research after after gathering this information then people may move or the companies may move to collect the primary data but keep in mind that secondary data which is freely available should uh, should be first uh, first uh, used uh, so that it it cuts down the time and money then these are some some other sources of uh, secondary data that are uh, uh, freely available the problem with the sec but uh, all this information that is freely available there are it comes with certain kind of problems so the problem with secondary data research is that is the accuracy of data how accurate the data is so that is the question how accurate it is age of data how old is it is reliability over time so has has the reliability been lost over time and how to go about comparing this data across countries these are the two methods for uh, that can be used to compare data uh, across uh, uh, compare uh, across countries and across sources so one source may say that the number of adults in a country in a country is x another source say, says that the number of adults in a country are y and yet another source says that it is z so how to go about compare uh, comparing that so for that we need uh, there are two types of methods available first is to triangulate and then functional or conceptual equivalence has to be uh, seen and the lumping of data so for example one study collects data for kids 0 to 5 another from 6 to to 10 in another country they collect data for 0 to 3 4 to 6 and 7 to 10 now how to Uh, the, these are the various lim uh, lumps of data how to establish a comparability between uh, from in this data the next thing is primary global marketing research after uh, going through the secondary data the another thing uh, uh, another important step that has to be take, uh, 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 taken is to conduct a, uh, primary global marketing research because seldom do secondary data pro prove sufficient for international marketing research studies so it is not sufficient enough to base your marketing marketing decisions therefore companies they go in for primary research also 
The primary data can be collected in several ways. One is the focus groups, survey research, observational research and test markets. A focus group is a loosely structured free flowing discussion among a small group. The group may include uh, may, 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 may have 8 to 12 people of target consumers. So, this focus group will is a loosely structured free flowing discussion in a small group of 8 to 12 target consumers which is facilitated by a professional mod moderator. The focus group can be used for, for many different purposes. The different purposes may include that it can be used to generate information to guide the quantitative research projects, one, to uncover new product opportunities and to test out new, uh, new product concepts. So, when 8 to 12 target consumer they come together, they, uh, and then they can be used, uh, they, this group can be used to identify what may be the new product opportunities and to test out new product concepts. Moderator should be familiar with the local language and the social interaction pattern. The problem is the cultural sen sensitivity is an absolute must with focus groups. Japanese consumers tend to be much more hesitant to criticize new product ideas than their western, western counterparts. So, the, uh, the idea of uh, telling you all this is that these are the various approaches and the importance or utility, importance and utility of these methods may be different in different countries in different contexts. So, one method cannot prove to be, uh, uh, to, uh, to be a solution for all kind of problems across the world. When analyzing and interpreting focus group findings, market researchers should also concentrate on non-verbal cues. That is why there is a need to, to have, a, have a moderator who will moderate this, this focus group discussion. So, the, the, that is why it is called as focus group discussion. So, this moderator, he should be familiar with local language and social interaction patterns, so that these non-verbal cues can also be incorporated in the finding of the focus, uh, focus group discussions. How to go about conducting survey methods for, for cross culture uh, marketing research? One is the questionnaire design. So, we look at the conceptual and functional equivalence, translation and scalar equivalence back translation and parallel tra translation and scalar equivalence. Now, this is a funny faces scale. Instead of asking whether they like the concept or not or how much they like, uh, my, like the new product idea, these are the faces that are shown. So, obviously, as, as you can see that this is very unhappy and this is very happy. So, instead of, instead of uh, giving, uh, giving marks from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These faces are shown and then after telling about the concept, the faces are shown and the, and the respondents they take on, uh, on whatever they feel comfortable with. The sampling plan consists of the sampling unit, who answers the question, how many people will answer the question and the sampling procedure. The con contact method is by mail, that is your, your normal uh, postal mail. The telephone, person to person interviews, that is do going from door to door. And there can be online survey methods. So, you can, you can attach a, a questionnaire with the email and then, then you can send, send it to, uh, to the respondents. There are random web, uh, website surveys and panel website surveys. When you collect information, th there can be respondent and or interviewer related biases. So, either the 
either either bias is creeping from the respondent side or from the interviewer side. Then there can be a problem of non-response. The respondent may be reluctant to talk to the strangers. Then they may fear about the confidentiality of the of the data that they provide. If suppose you also the questionnaire also talks about ask about the demographics. Then the respondent may not feel comfortable in providing that data because they may think that the data may not be conf conf confidential. And then there are other cultural biases which uh, inhibit uh, respondents from uh, from giving uh, the data. There are courtesy biases. So, the, the courtesy is that people may not say no. As we have seen in, in the case of Japan, people do not generally say no. So, that is a courtesy bias and then there are social desirability bias. So, what is considered to be socially acceptable? So, uh, if, uh, if a question like do you drink or do you normally or more, more often you will get a response as no. So, this is the social so because these are socially desirable, socially acceptable answers. Then there are a certain observational research, observation that uh, as the name suggests you are observing people. One type of obser observation research is ethnographic. It means it includes field workers. These field workers are usually cultural anthropologists embed themselves in local communities that they are uh, they are studying. So, they go and live with the communities. The basic notion is to gather useful information by participating in the everyday life of people being studied. So, they live there uh, with the uh, with those people and then they look, look through their life all, all through the day uh, for collecting data. Part of the data collection exercise often involves videotaping participating consumer in purchase or consumption setting. So, how do they make purchase one and how do they consume two? So, these things are videotaped or recorded so that they can be analyzed uh, la later on because they, this these two things give they, it they gives lot lot of information about uh, about new new products also. Another, another type of uh, observational research is picture completion or collage. They are often useful when studying the behavior or feelings of young children. The challenge in collecting the information is the issue of non-response. People do not respond. One, second again is the courtesy bias, social desirability bias or redundancy asking the same question in different ways and issues of ethnographic research because it takes lots of time and, uh, and money to conduct uh, ethnography observational research. Then there can be how, ca how, you go, how to go about leveraging or using the internet for global marketing research. So, these are the various types of methods. One is online surveys, bulletin boards and chat groups, webs, uh, web uh, visitor tracking, virtual panels and again focus groups. So, the, here we are using uh, focus group in online context. So, here those 8 to 10 people they come together online and discuss out uh, the issue at hand. There are various advantages of using global marketing research. Uh, uh, for example, the large samples they can be quickly assembled while in offline it is a timely and a costly affair. Then internet provides access to uh, access across the globe to the consumers. Obviously, the cost is low and then anom uh, uh, anonymity of sensitive topics, direct data load for swift analysis and short response time. The disadvantage of using internet is that the limited internet access in many countries. So, in, in many countries the internet access may not be May, may not be available or it may not be so good. Samples will not be representative because sample will include people only with internet access. 
download time that will hinder access there may be incorrect addresses or poor connection the uh, 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 that is this another disadvantage is low response rate and multiple responses from the same uh, fr from the same person so that will uh, that will create create data uh, the the problem with analysis of the data should we take only one response from from the uh, from uh, from the respondent or uh, and how to identify whether the same person is, is is giving more than one response so to conclude this model covered major issues that complicate cross country research in 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 domestic uh, marketing research all these issues are not there while in global marketing research the, these issues they creep in and then uh, they they make, they make this cross uh, uh, this cross country research complicated the process and techniques of global market research were also uh, described in this uh, module and we have also discussed how the internet can support global marketing research studies again these are the two books that can be used for further understanding of uh, global marketing research process thank you